I went to Value Village the other day and I found 10 books for only $35 and I was so excited and I'm going to show you those books because some of them are legitimately phenomenal finds in really good condition, recently published. I think one of them is a 2022 publication. Some of them are award-winning, some of them are like big on book talk, etc. So I'm gonna show you the books and I was going to do just a regular book haul. I brought them home, great. Let's talk about these books and put it on YouTube, but then a question entered my head. Actually, a series of questions entered my head. Is Value Village even an ethically responsible place to shop? Is this somewhere I want to promote book buying from? How is Value Village able to say that they're supporting charities while not being a charity themselves? Is Value Village the best thrift store to buy used books from? I've never shopped for books at any other major thrift store. What is book buying like at other major thrift stores? Is it possible that there is one that is better than Value Village? Cheaper? That I would want to support more? I have questions, and birthed from these questions is this video, which will be a very, very, very surface level of response to the questions. But I'm hoping that you in my audience can respond even more in depth in the comment section. I've actually been wondering about the business model of Value Village for a while now because I sort of knew that they were a for-profit business, but at the same time, they market themselves as being really good for charities. So I did some Googling and there was this fine print all over their websites that said, shopping at Value Village TM does not support any nonprofit. And I was like, wait a second, what? I thought that I was supporting charities by shopping at Value Village. It turns out, no, donating to Value Village is what supports the charities. Value Village is owned by Savers, which is owned by TPG Capital. They are for profit, so all of the money that you spend at Value Village goes to the company. The way that they give back to the community is by partnering with local not for profits who they actually buy your donations from. So when you donate clothes or any other goods to Value Village in my area, you are actually selling them to Value Village on behalf of Diabetes Canada, who partner with Value Village and are, quote, paid based upon the volume of goods delivered. Through this partnership, Diabetes Canada raises an average of $5 million annually where proceeds raised support diabetes research, education, programs, services, and advocacy, end quote. And Diabetes Canada also has all of these donation boxes around my city. Any clothes you put in there actually go to Value Village. So shopping at Value Village doesn't support Diabetes Canada, but donating to Value Village does. Also, not everything that you donate to Value Village ends up getting sold in their stores. Only about 20% is. So where does everything else go? Well, CBC did a study and it turns out 5% of that ends up being garbage, which I guess is inevitable. 20% is ground down or reprocessed. 30% is cut down and used as rags. 25% is sold secondhand abroad. But CBC also notes that the problem with moving secondhand clothing to the developing world is that it suppresses the struggling textile industries in those countries and dumps our waste into their landfills." End quote. What's more, some people have argued that as thrifting becomes more popular and fashionable and because thrift stores like Value Village don't cost a lot in labor to maintain, for-profit companies like Value Village can take advantage of that by raising prices and driving up profits, making the clothing and therefore environmental sustainability less accessible. Now, I don't really shop for clothing at Value Village because their prices are kind of high and I would rather get one really high quality pair of jeans for more money and then wear them into the ground over the course of a decade or more from a sustainability conscious company because I feel like that is is probably the most environmentally friendly and cost-effective thing that I can do. But what I do and have bought from Value Village is books. The other day when I went to Value Village, I got 10 books for $35. That's an average of $3.50 per book. Value Village actually has kind of a complex pricing model on their books. Their cheapest books are $1.99 per book, and their most expensive ones are $5.99 per book. And then if you buy four books, you get the fifth one free. 
of equal or lesser value, but they don't individually price the books on the shelves. They scan these barcodes they have in a book at the exit, and the book's prices depend on what type of book they are, but also the original cost of the book. And so I always price it out what I'm going to be getting, including the free book and whatever as I'm shopping. But then when I get to the cash, it's always less money than I expect it to be. Sometimes like $20 less than I expected it to be. Like these 10 books, I expected to pay about $45 for them. I ended up paying $35 for them. So even though $5.99 is actually quite a bit more expensive than the books at other thrift stores that I went to, in the end, they end up averaging about exactly the same amount of money per book as the other thrift stores. Value Village also had the most expansive book section, like almost a full used bookstore worth of books on their shelves, which is a positive because it's more likely you're gonna find a good book, but also a negative because it's not really organized in any way other than genre. And when you have like five shelves dedicated to sci-fi and fantasy, you kind of have to look through every single book to find the ones that you want. So finding 10 books that I wanted took me about an hour in Value Village. Some things that I'm not sure of and I would be curious to know is where do the unsold books from Value Village go? Surely they don't just stay on the shelves forever, but they also can't be turned into rags. So where do those books go. And also, why are their books still so cheap despite everything else which seems to be rising in price? Or have their book prices increased over the years? I'm not sure. I only started shopping for books there recently. The second shop that I went to was the Salvation Army, and the Salvation Army is not just a thrift store, but also an actual international Christian church. And their mission is twofold. One, to share the love of Jesus, and two, to help meet human needs and support communities. They do this by providing food, shelter, and clothing to those who need it without discrimination. That said, although they provide aid to anyone who needs it, the church also encourages discriminatory practices that I don't want to support personally, and I'll include links to those statements in the description box below. Salvation Army's pricing model for the books was $1.99 for, for soft covers and $3.99 for hard covers. So if you stick to soft covers, which I did, it's actually the cheapest thrift store to buy books at. And if you stick to hard covers, it's possibly the most expensive one to thrift at. And finally, I went to Goodwill. I actually don't know if I've ever been to Goodwill before, but Goodwill is a nonprofit who's focuses on jobs, work, and economic self-sufficiency for individuals and communities. One way they do this is to provide employment to people with disabilities and other social disadvantages. Every one of their employees is offered scholarships to help them get an education and advance their careers. Goodwill's philosophy is a hand up, not a hand out, and that actually really seems evident in everything they seem to do from my very surface level research I did on their website. <laughs> the book section at Goodwill was probably the small of the three thrift stores that I went to in my area, but Goodwill does have three dedicated bookstores at locations around Ontario. And one of their locations in London, Ontario actually has online shopping for curbside pickup due to the pandemic, which is super cool for a used thrift bookstore to have. All of the books that I got at Goodwill ended up being $3.50 each, no matter what type of book it was. It looks like their prices fluctuate more than that at their dedicated book stores. And I actually got quite a number of books at this spot, even though they had the smallest book section. So this is also the only place that I found good nonfiction books. Ultimately, if I am planning on shopping for books at a major thrift store in the future, of these three options, I will probably choose Goodwill first. Their option pool of books wasn't too overwhelming. They have dedicated bookstores, so I can go to like an actual bookstore that Goodwill runs. Their pricing was middling, but very reliable. And from what I can tell, I appreciate the type of work that they're doing in our communities. So I would love to hear from you in the comments, especially if you are somebody that knows more than me about this topic. Really every video I make is just an attempt to get individualized advice and recommendations from strangers on the internet. So thank you for your comments. Now that we've had that conversation, let's talk about the books that I found. Without further ado, here are the books that I found at Value Village. First, Red Mars by Kim Stanley Robinson. This is a trilogy. Red Mars is followed by Green Mars and Blue Mars. The first one was published in 1992. It's about terraforming Mars and the different interests involved in that process, and it won the Nebula Award. Next up, we have The Martian by Andy Weir. 
This was published in 2011. It's now a brilliant movie as well. It is also set on and around Mars, but it is about a man who is stuck in space with no way to contact Earth and his refusal to give up trying to get home. Next up, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. This was published in 1994. I read and enjoyed Kafka on the Shore, but I didn't really enjoy what I talk about when I talk about running or the colorless Tsukuro Tazaki. I mean, that one was just okay. So I'm still trying to determine whether this is an author that I like and want to read more from. Next is 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. This was published in 2015, and I picked it up because it won the Scotiabank Giller Prize that year. Apparently, it's book two in a cycle of five books, which is called a quincunx, a word I have never heard before. It's also an apologue, another new word to me, which is a fable with exaggerated details to teach a moral lesson. It is the story of 15 dogs at a Toronto vet clinic who are granted human consciousness. Next up, we have two books by Madeline Miller, the first of which is The Song of Achilles, published in 2011. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's about Achilles during the Trojan War, and I hear many people cry while reading, and I am absolutely certain that I also will cry. Circe is also by Madeline Miller. It was published in 2018, another Greek myth retelling. This one, though, is about Circe, a goddess who can turn people into animals. Next, we have Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. It was published in 1961. It's a fictional story set during World War II about the absurdity of war. It's thought to be one of the most significant novels of the 20th century. I also found this copy of The Death of Vivek Oji in really good condition by Akweke Emezi. It was published in 2020 and set in southeastern Nigeria. It is about the life of Vivek Oji with themes of family, friendships, homosexuality, and loss. 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson, the second Kim Stanley Robinson on this list. This was published in 2012. Humanity has spread onto other planets, but in the year 2312, it is now forced to confront its past, present, and future. Those are all the books that I found at Value Village. Let's move on to the two that I found at Salvation Army. The first one is The Farm by Joanne Ramos. It was published in 2019. The Farm is a place where you can get free, luxurious massages, lodging, and meals and get paid a ton of money to do that as long as you have a baby for a super wealthy client and you can't leave for the entire nine months. The next one was The Maid by Nita Prose. It was published this year, in 2022. This is about a maid who finds a dead body and is then accused of the murder. Next up are the books that I found at Goodwill. These are mostly nonfiction. The first one is Policing Black Lives, State Violence in Canada from Slavery to the Present by Robin Maynard. It was published in 2017 and it traces the history of anti-blackness in the land that we now call Canada. Next up is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It was published in 2015. It's the first book in a YA sci-fi series about AI, space wars, and an ex-boyfriend. Not usually what I would go for, to be honest, but it's an epistolary novel told through a series of emails, maps, files, medical reports, interviews, and more. So I was very curious. Next is Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents by Isabel Wilkerson. It was published in 2020. The hidden hierarchies that still exist in contemporary American society is the topic of this book. And then finally, I found two by Naomi Klein, an author that I haven't read before, but I was really interested in The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism, which was published in 2006. And I figured I might as well get her 2014 book, This Changes Everything, Capitalism versus the Climate. So those are all the books that I found at these thrift shops, and if you want to hear more about any of these books in the future, then you might want to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you got some information or a book recommendation out of this video, and I look forward to chatting with you in the comment section. Bye!